Welcome. Thank you. You come from uh, Pavia, and you're right. a big expert in amyloidosis. Nice. And uh, you've been talking at ASCO about this now. I don't suppose there are too many people at ASCO know too much about amyloidosis. Yes. What were you telling them? Yeah, this is the reason why I, I was supposed to discuss five posters, and I elected to uh, discuss the disease instead, putting the poster into the perspective of the disease, because I thought that it was so important to have the chance to pass on the message to the oncologist that it's very important to recognize these patients. It's a rare disease, but it's not so rare as people think because the incidence now is considered to be around 15 new patients per million per year. And uh, it's very important to recognize them very early in the disease before the light chains cause end stage organ damage. So, really, so how do you do that? How do you recognize exactly, early amyloidosis? Exactly. So I gave some hints to them. Just uh, if any patient has some protein in urine yep. and he has a monoclonal gammopathy, or he can start showing some echocardiography abnormalities, but very early because late, uh, later on it's too late. But what are the early abnormalities of echo? Yes. I mean, we do a lot of echoes for yeah, exactly. cardiotoxicity. So you should look at uh, what is called hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. So uh, increase, increase, yes, thick, uh, increased thickness of the ventricular associated with low voltage at ACG and some pericardial effusion. This is diagnostic almost 90%, more than 90% of the cases. So and that's still early? Uh, that is I would have thought that is, might be late. That is rather late. Yeah. So they should recognize in the early phase. But if you look at protein, because the kidney is the most affected organ. So if you just, I mean, some of these patients do have a protein in the urine for some months or years, and they go unnoticed. And then I just presented a, a slide with some prototypic uh, presentation, that, uh, some, such as periorbital purpura, for instance, that is not common, is only 12 to 15 percent of the patient, but uh, doctors cannot miss this type of patient. And unfortunately, some of these patients are sent to the oculist or to the dermatologist, so they, they lose time. and. Really, here is time is life, so it's very important to be uh, uh, to make the diagnosis very early because this is really the key to the success of the treatment. If we can uh, have an early diagnosis, then we can treat effectively now this. So what with what? How do you treat amyloidosis early? Yeah, these light, uh, these plasma cells do produce these misfolded light chains. And these misfolded light chains are toxic to the several organs, but they are most likely toxic to the clone itself. To so the what itself? The clone. The clone, oh, really? That is producing the light chains. Right. So we in the bone marrow? In the bone marrow. Oh, okay. So this is most likely the reason why the clone is always rather small in this type of patients. And now we have some drugs and new drugs which are ex particularly effective in this type of patient. So with bortezomib, for instance, and alpha antiximetazone, I just commented one of these posts, you can reach response rate higher than 80%. That was never seen, but very quickly, less than one month, uh, median time of response. That is exactly what we need to get rid of this light chain as soon as possible. So that's sort of standard uh, multiple myeloma therapy. Exactly. Yeah. But in this case, it's much more uh, effective. And in some of these patients, we, uh, we have reason to think that you can get rid of the clone or you can get rid of the clone for several years. And this is very important because research is going on all the time. And in, in several years, we will have many more uh, tools to attack the clone and to attack the disease itself. The disease is, compli is a complex disease, sure. but uh, I mean, the more we know, the more point of attack now we have. So people are just thinking about removing the amyloid deposit using monoclonal antibodies and so on. So <clears throat> at the end, we will use several approaches just to get rid of these. What sort of antibodies have you got in mind? Well, and at Rome, <clears throat> we had this international symposium on amyloidosis in Rome mm -hmm. just in April 18, 2021, that I organized as a president of the International Society of Amyloidosis. And <clears throat> the UK group presented the data on this monoclonal antibody against SAP. SAP is a common constituent of all type of amyloid. And this antibody can induce the uh, removal of uh, the amyloid deposit. And another group in Tennessee has produced an antibody against the light chain amyloidosis that has been developed by in collaboration with NCI. 
So things are progressing. And can you uh, label those antibodies with a, exactly. a technetium and, good, and good, pick good up? Good point. Them. Actually, the early, in Rome, they presented the data on imaging of the antibodies. Yes. With yeah. this antibody, you can have a very nice imaging. That was the prerequisite to use it as a therapy. As, as a therapy. Exactly. Sure. But I mean, it's, that's hopeless as a screening, screening tool, presumably. But you, you Yeah, but for screening, we have a rather powerful, very simple technique, such as abdominal fat aspiration, which is innocuous. It's very fast, rapid. You can do it outpatient, and you can have the answer in half an hour. You aspirate fat, yes, and then and then you just <coughs> squeeze it. Yes, you stain it with Congo red, and then you look at the microscope. You can pick up the amyloid. Wow. Yes, and the sensitivities are more than eighty percent, and specificity is more than ninety percent. So it's very good. Which, which cancers are linked to amyloidosis? Well, amyloidosis is a, a general term because, sure. it, as you know, it, it goes from Alzheimer's to systemic amyloidosis. So systemic amyloidosis, one of the points that I made is very important that you made the, the diagnosis of the uh, exact type of the amyloid. Otherwise, you risk catastrophic mistakes. You can treat, uh, for instance, one amyloid is sustained by a mutated protein produced by the liver, transthyretin. And this gives a type of amyloid that sometimes can mimic AL amyloidosis that is produced by light chains from the clone. Right. So you can apply, and uh, is a, a disease of elderly people. So it's really an age-related disease. Yeah. And uh, so in elderly people, as you know, M gas is rather common. A, a small a spike is common to be found in approximately 3.5% of the people after the age of 15. So you could have coincidence of these two effects. And if you're not careful, you can just conclude that you have an AL amyloid, treat this patient with chemotherapy, while actually this patient do need liver transplant. So I pointed out that it's very important to make sure that you are treating the right disease. And now we have, uh, in Rome, we set up that the new gold standard is the proteomics technology to make the diagnosis. On your? And to make the exact diagnosis of amyloid. But on what? On tissue? On a tissue yes, biopsy? Even, or, even or can a, you do even, that on the light chains? No? no, no, you can do it in, on this fat aspirate. Right. Okay. So you just aspirate 20 milligrams of fat and then you just use it for proteomics, uh, electromicroscopy, or the other type. So it's very, now is uh, making the diagnosis and typing it is crucial for the right. Uh, Therapy. So your combination is bortezomib, melphalan, and dexamethasone, and this is, is, is being proved to be very effective, and for this reason now we are starting a European trial for the first time that will be paralleled by a trial made by ECOG here in the state using exactly the same protocol comparing melphalan and dexamethasone that was standard treatment for patients who are not eligible for stem cell transplant versus bortezomib, melphalan, and dexamethasone. Yeah. We will see soon, but it's... Most interesting. Thank you yes. so much. Thank I you really very much. I really appreciate speaking to you.